is an American. And two, we probably have four weeks to stand. One mission under God, indivisible, with the liberty of us and strong. Victor, would you lead us to prayer, please? Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you've allowed us to be in. <clears throat> we ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your wisdom. God, shed your light upon the city of Monte Vista and throughout the San Luis Valley. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You need a roll call, please. Councilor Howard. Here. Councilor Locke. Here. Councilor Lorenz. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Sabola. Here. Mayor Becker. Here. A quorum is declared. Okay, modifications to the agenda. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I do have one modification to the agenda. I need to add L3, the IGA for a coordinated election. I move to uh, approve the modification to agenda, adding L3 IGA. Second. And moved and seconded to approve the modifications to the agenda to add L3, the IGA for coordinated elections. Is there any more discussion? You need a? Councilor Howard? Aye. Councilor Locke? Aye. Councilor Lorenz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Segola? Aye. Mayor Becker? Aye. Motion carries to modify the agenda, adding L3. The IGA for month for coordinated election. Approval of consent agenda minutes a regular meeting from August 3rd, 2023, and approval of accounts payable. Move to approve the consent agenda. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda for the minutes of the regular meeting August 3rd, 2023, and review and approval of accounts payable. Is there any discussion? You need a? Councillor Howard? Yes. Councillor Locke? Aye. Councillor Lorenz? Aye. Mayor Pritam Segola? Aye. Mayor Becker? Aye. Motion carries to approve the consent agenda. <laughs> okay, we will go to uh, proclamations, communications, and appointments. National Fentanyl Awareness Day 2023. We have a proclamation. National Fentanyl Awareness Day, August 23rd, 2023. Whereas National Fentanyl Awareness Day aims to amplify nationwide efforts to increase awareness and decrease demand for fentanyl, which is a highly addictive synthetic opioid that continues to drive the overdose epidemic. And whereas fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that is approximately 50 times more potent than heroin and 100 times more potent than morphine, and whereas fentanyl is involved in more deaths of Americans under 50 than any other cause, including heart disease, cancer, homicide, suicide, and other accidents. And whereas fentanyl is involved in nearly 50% of opioid overdoses, and the problem knows no regional, gender, age, income, or other bounds, it is truly an epidemic and whereas the most effective way to address the overdose crisis are evidence-based public health and harm reduction strategies that keep people alive and maximize their potential for recovery. And whereas young people and families need to have a strong sense of awareness about this drug and the dangers of it. To prevent more deaths of kids as young as middle school age, and whereas the town of Town of Ignacio and other local governments in our region created the Southwest Opioid Regional District in 2022 to facilitate the best and most collaborative use opioid settlements, settlement funds for opioid addiction treatment, recovery and prevention programs for residents in our region. And whereas the city of Monta Vista has committed their portion of the opioid settlement funds to the Southwest Opioid Regional District to aid in risk reduction program in response to a recent increase in drug use and overdose incidences in Southwest Colorado, which have had far reaching impacts on the community. Now, therefore the city of Monta Vista, City Council hereby proclaims August 23rd, 
2023 to be the National Fentanyl Awareness Day and encourages residents to be aware of the dangers of fentanyl and have open conversations about fentanyl with their friends and family. No one is exempt from the dangers of fentanyl, and it is critical that we keep our community and loved ones safe. Very good. No proclaimed. Um, citizen comments and special presentation. <laughs> City Council welcomes your unscheduled comments. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Council will not take action at the same meeting. All right, sir. Sign, up. sign this while I talk. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for the opportunity to address the. Um, <clears throat> just uh, can't think and write at the same time. Um, the council. Uh, my name is David Hamburg. I serve as the president of Adams State University, and I know that it can seem as though. Um, we spend a lot of time and attention to your neighbor city down the road, um, but I want you to know that we are the Valley's University and that we take our partnerships with every city and town, every county in the Valley very seriously. Um, I have appreciated the opportunity to serve as interim president for a year, and now I'm even more honored to have the opportunity to serve as the permanent president. Um, I like to think of Adam State as a steward of place. Now, what I mean by that is that we ought to be serving as a critical partner in the endeavors of the Valley, um, whatever they may be. That could be economic development, um, providing educational opportunities, economic mobility, addressing social issues like the one that that letter just addressed, whatever they may be, we hope that you see us. We want to be um, your partner. Um, an example of our commitment to the ballet is um, not too long ago, the Small Business Development Center was without a home. Um, and it was looking like it would have to move to Pueblo. We, I think Pueblo is a fine city, but it's on the wrong side of the pass. Um, and we um, did what we had to do to bring the Small Business Development Center into Adams State University. So we are now the host. We see that again, as it is appropriately titled, the Valley's Small Business Development Center. So. Um, as your the citizens of your city are eager to start or expand new businesses, please send them our way. Um, we'll help them out. And it's located within our school of business. So it's able to draw on the entire resources of our school and not only that, the university. Um, a, we are really proud and I'm personally incredibly proud of where we're located in the San Luis Valley. And I uh, believe firmly that not only does the Valley need Adams State, but equally Adams State needs the Valley. It's where we get our identity, our mission, our purpose. And um, as long as I'm here, we'll take that very seriously. So thank you for your time. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here this, this evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I don't have anything to say. That's how I say that. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. And I just want to say, city looks good. Rob, you're doing a, you're, you and your guys are amazing. What they do. And when I work in the flower beds and I see little things they have paid attention to, that's beyond what they maybe need to, it, they do a great job. So thank you. And you let them know that. And uh, 
I was wondering, does anybody know when our new pub is going to open up? You know, the one on second house. Yeah, the they're working on it. They are. They're working on it. They're, they're working very hard because it looks just amazing every time I go past there. What I just think that is so cool. So and uh, I had something else to ask. No, now I forgot what it was. I blame it on COVID, you know, brain fog and all that stuff. But I just want to say, I am just so glad to be living here. I just love this little town. And I think people are really starting to come around. I see people helping each other. I actually saw a lady down the street from me sweeping her street, you know, the little Kirby area. And I went over and I, I said, I sure appreciate you doing that. I mean, she was just... It, it's just nice to see these things. So, and the theater, oh my gosh, I can't say enough nice things about the theater. He is doing an absolutely terrific job. And uh, I just, just want to thank everybody for the work they do and keep it up. And we are having elections this fall. Will we meet the people who are up for running or something? Is that part of the, I can't remember what happened the last time. So probably we'll get to, okay, I just wonder. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. And like I said, happy to be here. Thank you, Margo. Thank you. Anybody else? You follow that. We can follow that. <laughs> All right. We'll go to scheduled appearances. In order to be included in this, you have to be on the agenda and please file the appropriate paperwork with the city clerk no later than noon on Monday prior to the meeting. More street traffic study. Good evening, Mayor and Council. First off, I want to uh, just kudos to Dr. Kinberg. I mean, that. Um, I think it's the first time we've seen anybody out of state here at a city council. In the three years that I've been here, and I've actually gotten to know him pretty well over the last year or so and worked on a couple of things with him. And he's a, he's a great addition to Adam State meetings. So thank you for being here. Um, so more street study. So we completed that. Um, and this is in your council packet. Just real quick highlight on this. The main thing is, is getting with Pat Sullivan. Pat's really good um, from the county. He's really good with uh, like signage and the way it should be and stuff like that. So all said and done, we're going to add a couple of stop signs. We're going to make that fourth and um, Morris a four-way. Because the way Pat explained it, like every two blocks, we basically should be having stop signs stuff. I did put in here, it'd be nice if we had the funding to put a speed limit sign in every every block. But that would be, what you say, Rob, like 240 bucks per sign or something per block. So, and we don't, you know, that's why we also have, at the beginning, when we come into town, it says, 30 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. So, and that's prima facie law, which Colorado law says, um, you know, you have you get a Colorado driver's license, you should know what the speed limit is in the residential area and stuff. So we're hoping that, that works. I did talk to Justin about it and stuff. So we'll we'll see and we'll monitor it. Um, along the lines of traffic, we just, because I told you we'll, we're going to start doing traffic enforcement operations now that we're finally fully staffed. Thank you, um, which is kind of nice. We did our first one yesterday down on Prospect and the schools and then uh, David and some of the officers went down there and it worked out really well. And then we're just gonna move that around as, as other areas. Then the next traffic study we're gonna do is on Newcomb. Um, there's like that from Stalo to the, to the ditch there. That's like a racetrack there. So we're gonna try and come up with some options to, to change that up. There's several neighbors. It's interesting, I went down there Monday morning to do traffic and the only one that caught speeding was was somebody who lives in the neighborhood so go figure right um so but anyway um so hopefully this will help resolve this down on Morris and stuff and we'll we'll monitor and stuff and I told Justin you know if it doesn't then we'll try something else so all right nice job chief appreciate it thank thank Pat for that too yeah yeah Pat's uh uh, we need to find some funding to get some traffic study stuff because we count on Pat. I he was going to start mine this week, but Rob stole him from me to do another traffic study. So, um, but anyway, thank you. Any questions on it? I have no questions. Appreciate what you did. I will tell you that uh, I had an elderly gentleman in the same area 
on the alley side. You said they're getting out of control. On the alley? The alley between the like like there's well, a the alley between okay. the Morris and the field. Yeah, so oh. you go from 160 down the alley. Okay. So, yeah. Did, yeah. Okay. The road's I'll, actually blocked on that far end. We actually closed the gate. And they, they right made a little the, yeah, right through the front. So just okay. I got the call just I think it was Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, there's this, there's a little oval, green, forest green one in there that just mornings or afternoon? Uh, morning and afternoon. Probably go to work and come. And probably just flying through there. And then, like right there on the, what is it, second? Second and, and, and the alley. Second and the alley right there. Like, because I, I drive, like, I okay. work right I'll there. Listen. If you give those like those, just let me know and I'll give them to David because he's going to be the one running the um traffic operations and we'll just figure out the times and go down there and, and you know sit there for and like I said, we did this on inspect yesterday and they are very successful and the school even called and said, Hey, thank you. That because it was, I mean, it, that was mostly high school kids and stuff, so we're just trying to educate, not necessarily. I mean, if somebody needs a ticket, they're going to get a ticket, but a lot of this is just getting them back into the routine of. Being smart school zones and stuff like that but these that's unexcusable i explained to him as well i said break down the time whenever you see it right yeah that, that helps a lot because some pinpoint like here on warps i went down there different times and there was one i was like man so i hope somebody wakes me up here pretty quick because there's like like i was there like an hour or so and there was like three or four cars you know so that's that really helps us a lot if we can narrow down the times and stuff so and and specific cars because just one's very specific on a couple of cars and and um, hopefully we we solve that. So may I ask a question about yes. that? I'm just curious. I, I I haven't heard about any trouble, so thank y'all for bringing that up. But um, is that alley used for anything other than like the people who are parking in the back? And is it used as a thoroughfare? Is it yes. supposed to be used as a thoroughfare? No, so it is. It's used as a thoroughfare. Seven years ago, um, that road is used as a thoroughfare, and we were instructed to close the gate, so we installed and closed the gate down there. And since then, the people that they use it from Lariat as a shortcut to get over to this side of the shopping centers, and they have bypassed the gate and gone out in private property. So the gate is actually where the road is. Right. Property. Yeah. I knew it was just a one way. I was just curious as to, you know, if there was any reason that it couldn't just be still allow the people that live there access to, you know, come out their backyard and come up that little block. But couldn't there be a way to put a, a it, gate like every the gate at, like few a blocks floor. or something? Well, and the gates will be down there by um, Larry at where it turns. Oh, there's, so I wonder who owns that. I'll, I'll find out who owns that. I'll find out who owns that and see if they. I was just thinking about maybe like three or four gates up the whole yeah. thing. That I mean, fences, barbed wire. I'm thinking cheap. Mm. And that way, just it's still a public way. So alleys are. Well, that's probably that. Think it's a, is, is it house 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 that, that, yeah. Well, that the, owns that place. Trash, just like uh, like low income down the area on the Morris. Way. There's like they, three blocks. I thought the trash. They all have now, the same Morris Street. Um, I know that I'll figure it out. On that day. I don't know. Yeah. When it's just curious. I, I, I know. I know that. I know the maintenance guy that takes care of all those places, but I don't know if if uh, they actually have anything to do with the property or not. Okay, I'll go down and figure that out on Monday and uh, and see if we can do something with, and talk to the homeowner down there about stopping it. But probably I don't know. So 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 I know who lives on the corner. Uh, her name is Linda, uh, but she, you know, they just rent from the, from that housing authority. I wonder if that would help with just closing off that little bypass. That would probably help. I didn't probably fence it. I just need permission from the people that own the land to okay. get on there. Fence. We'll work on that on Monday. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get this off on Monday. So, any other questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate all the work you put into that, Chief. We're going to do the same, like I said, on Newcomb and so we have report to review. This one is. We're going to go to ordinances. There were 921 ordinance amending article three of chapter 12 of the municipal code. 
Um, so the ordinance you have before you, I swear we passed to this in like February, and then I was told we didn't. So this ordinance, uh, we, we've talked about it before. Basically what this does is it allows people who live in non-conforming homes, if their home was to be destroyed right now, they would not be allowed to rebuild. Um, so this affects some areas, like if you were to look at Broadway or anything between 1st and 3rd Avenue um, that's in the central business district that are homes, if they were to burn all the way to the ground, they would not be able to rebuild if they destroyed more than 51%. Um, we have other areas in town, such as on Clearview, that are also zoned as CH, where we have some, some personal or some homes that are there as well. And before, it didn't necessarily become a thing. However, the lenders have started to tighten up their their rules, and if it's not zoned so that they can rebuild, they will not underwrite their um, their mortgages, <clears throat> the refinances, and those kinds of things. So we had we've had to write a couple of letters saying that yes, this is a private residency, we'd be able to retain it. And so this ordinance basically will change that until we finish the land use code rewrite, which is in January. This just kind of protects those residents in the short term until we get the the code rewritten in January that will allow them to rebuild if they're non-conforming inside of a district. Because um, I, I think it's important to protect the citizens who have a home. I mean, some of these homes have been built in the early 1900s, and there's no reason for it to be uh, for them to be punished or not able to sell their house or refinance their house because of, of the way we have it. Um, so we worked through planning and zoning. This is the recommended ordinance that came out of it. Um, looked at changing the zoning in those areas, but we would end up with spot zoning, and that's not okay either. That's that makes it really painful. Um, so this makes it is at least allow them to continue doing what they've been doing um, until we get the code written. So that's why it's here. Um, any questions before I do first reading? No. Okay. So ordinance nine twenty one and ordinance of the city of Monta Vista amending Article three, administration of Chapter twelve zoning of the Monta Vista Municipal Code. That's all I have to read. I'm told. Make a motion to approve ordinance number 21, an ordinance amending article three of chapter 12 of the Vista Municipal Code. Second. On first reading. It's been moved and seconded to approve. Ordinance 921, ordinance amending article three of chapter 12 of the Mono Vista Municipal Code. Is there any more discussion? Nita? Councillor Howard? Aye. Councillor Locke? Aye. Councillor Lorenz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Mayor Becker? Aye. Motion carries to approve Ordinance 921, amending Article 3, Chapter 12 of the Monta Vista Municipal Code on first reading. Good. Board bid of City Hall Fence Project. So you guys have a staff um, staff report there. Uh, so when we did the Homeland Security grant this last year, we had five different projects. Um, only one was chosen Sky High. Um, the police department has the funds inside, mostly inside their 1%, but they do have the funds to go ahead and do the project that we had bid out um, for the Homeland Security project um, to put a fence around their portion of City Hall over there, put in a motorized gate so they can enter and exit without any issues. They will protect their vehicles as well as evidence and things that are too large to fit. Um, so we're asking that you guys approve the contract or the bid from uh, Your Great Outdoors, which was a bid received for the uh, federal grant. And then I talked to the owner this last week. He's still honoring his original price. Um, and he can go ahead and do it as soon as we say it's good to go. He's looking at late September. He'd be able to go ahead and start the project. Any questions? Would that be for you to sign or GG to sign? Um, I have I have it as GG because it's so, that's a large quantity or dollar amount. I make a motion to approve the selection of the proposal submitted by your Great Outdoors Construction and LLC to build a fence at City Hall for twenty eight thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars fifty nine cents. Authorize GG Dennis, City Manager, to sign the contract when it's completed. Second. Been moved in second to award the bid at, <coughs> for the fence around City Hall. Is there any more discussion? You need a Councillor Howard? Aye. Councillor Locke? Aye. Councillor Lorenz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Mayor Becker? Aye. Motion carries to award 
The funds project to your great outdoors and allow for city manager Gigi Dennis to sign the contract. Good. Okay, next item I have is uh, the McMullen Arena extension. Um, you guys had a work session on this. Um, the county wants to extend the arena by 20 feet east and 20 feet west. It will bring the building within three inches of the McMillan or the arena within three inches of the McMillan building. After talking to the uh, county building inspector, because of the way the structures are made, there's no fire code problems there. It's inside their current lease um, as far as their footprint goes. Um, and so I'm asking you guys to allow them to go ahead and do that. They do have a bid, they've got the design. I'm still waiting for the site. Um, the site plan to come back, but it shouldn't be that complicated. It's at 20 feet on each side. Um, I think that we should uh, amend the lease or work toward amending the lease of the McMullen building to, because right now there is no mechanism for amending the lease. The lease says they could build one building. Well, they've built two. The lease says they go from where the building is, give or take, to Sherman. Well, we went ahead and built a pavilion and our parking and our food truck stuff inside where they're currently leased. So both parties have violated this lease over time. Um, so I think we should amend this lease to match what it currently is and where we want it to go. Um, and then also uh, put in provisions for amending the lease down the road if in the next 25, 50 years or whatever, they want to, we want it to change it, they want to change it. There's gotta be a mechanism in there to do it. And there's not currently. So one of my recommendations is that the city and county staff, city and county attorneys get together and come up with an agreement that fits what the current footprint looks like, the direction they want to go, and both protect both the city and the county from disagreements in the future. Uh, so that's my recommendation from the staff side. Why is it I thought it was 20 feet and a one end, not both ends? There was a whole lot of confusion because when I first heard about it, I thought they were extending the McMullen building itself, and then I found out it was the arena, and then I thought it was 40 feet one way and found out it was 20 feet each direction. Like there was they, there was a whole lot of words and conversations that happened without any plans and without any drawings, which is why I think if we amend the lease that before they would go out to an RFP, because they already had closed the RFP when they came to the staff, um, that it says, you know, let's both agree. You guys vote on it, we vote on it before we go down that, that route. Um, because I know in the future they would like to possibly look at putting in bathrooms still. They have a couple other items that they're looking at possibly wanting to change down the road. So we might as well put a mechanism to give us some approval before they start spending money on RFPs and bidding and those kinds of things. <coughs> to make a motion to approve the extension of the arena for the McMullen building and approve, uh, following the approval of DJ Anderley once he's seen the site plans. Second it. Been moved and seconded to approve the extension of the arena for the McMullen building and the plans that DJ has in place. Is there any more discussion? You're you're good with all this. This goes along with everything that's going on out there. It should fit. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done some site planning, we've done some rolling. We've um the GIS is being done right now for the surveying. Um there, there's plenty of space there for what we would plan for the future. Okay. Is there any more discussion? Nita? Councillor Howard? Yes. Councillor Locke? Aye. Councillor Lorenz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Segola? Aye. Mayor Becker? Aye. Motion carries for the extension of the arena for the McMillan building. IGA for coordinated election. <clears throat> Good evening, Council and Mayor. I apologize, this wasn't in your packet. I actually received this um, after the packets were sent out. Um, this is the IG, IGA for the coordinated election with Rio Grande County. Um, this intergovernmental agreement is concerning responsibilities for the November 7th, 2023 election. Um, this IGA is giving permission. The district designates Unita Vance City Clerk as the designated election officer for the city of Monta Vista. Um, and then it also gives designation um, as you need advance the city clerk, um, my phone number, my email address for all coordinated elections for ballot information and for any information that is in regards to the election. Um, I just need permission for the IGA and approval 
and for the mayor to sign. Make a motion to uh, approve the IGA and allow the mayor to sign the IGA between the city of Monta Vista and Rio Grande County. Yep. And moved in second and to approve the IGA for the coordinated election between the city of Monta Vista and Rio Grande County and have the mayor sign it. Is there any discussion? Anita? Councillor Howard? Aye. Councillor Locke? Aye. Councilor Lorenz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Aye. Mayor Becker? Aye. Motion carries approving the IGA for coordinated in the election. <clears throat> All right, we will move to staff proposals and reports. Recreation. <laughs> oh, we've all been waiting for it. <clears throat> Any questions? <laughs> it's our slow time. Well, I'll say, uh, you say, when I say Monty, what do you say? Oh, okay. You said any questions. Okay. Monty. Spits on Pirates. Don't know that one. Get with it. Oh, my bad. Okay. <laughs> um, it's our slow time. So we're right now just taking registration for uh, football and for um, volleyball. It's been long. Where's your son at for football, man? He's in middle school this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, that's where we're at right now. It's just taking registration for sports. It's just in it. Our uh, tournament that we had last um, last month went really, really well. Uh, filled up all the hotels here uh, in Monte Vista. Teams from, out of, uh, from Aurora, from Pueblo, La Hanna, everywhere came down. So we were packed over there along with the carnival um, setting up too. So it's fun going, getting around all of that, but that's where we're at right now for recreation. Uh, just having a lot of fun. So that's it. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Kids Connection. Good evening. Mine is just as simple as recreation. We're just getting back to after school, so I don't have energy to talk about this week. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Um, we are still, well, we hired one, well, we actually we hired two of the positions. I had four positions open for the after school program. We hired two of them, um, Josiah Porter, who was a 2023 graduate of Monta Vista High School. Um, he was also, he grew up in Kids Connection. So we had him when he was in elementary and throughout middle school. He left us in high school and then he came back as soon as he graduated. Um, he volunteered with us all summer. So we got him some good on the job experience um, for the licensing requirements. And we decided we're going to put him to work. I don't think he really realized <laughs> what being a staff member was all about. Because as a volunteer, you don't have as much of the responsibility as an actual staff member. And he just looks at us every day like, I'm ready for bed. Um, and then our other hire is uh, Kayla Medina, who is also a 2023 graduate of Allen Wilson High School. So I have two very fresh young kiddos <laughs> in our program um, helping out with, the, with our kids. Um, and then I have, we hired another position. We're just waiting to get her going and I still have one more position open. So if you know anybody, send them my way. Please make sure that they know they have to show up to the job and they can in order to get the job. Um, really, other than that, it's just a lot of kids. We started Monday with like 30, and today I think we had almost 60. So tomorrow school is in session, so it's not a full Friday program for us yet. So we just have them for the few hours after school. So um, I think that's it. Sorry, my brain is not, it's been on just trying to keep kindergartners, first graders, and second graders from climbing on furniture and beating each other up. I have a lot of boys in that room. I don't have the energy for it. <laughs> that term boys will be boys. That <laughs> yeah, but I think I kind of asked for it because Jesse was like, I'll go in there with those kids. I was like, I was with those kids this summer. It was, it wasn't that bad. 
they've been gone for two weeks and came back and they forgot every rule we have. I've had a kid trying to find the bookshelf today and I'm just looking at him like, dude, you've been open for three years. Have you ever been able to do that? I have like six timeout chairs against the wall and everyone has been in timeout for a few minutes every hour. So week number one is almost done. I'm just glad I'm not full day, to be honest. I love the teachers and they, I can guarantee you they're having fun this week. Do you have any questions for me? That's all I got. No question. Just how do you do it? I, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> a lot of caffeine. A lot of caffeine. Yes. <laughs> I know every energy drink that works perfect because coffee's not enough. <laughs> I don't sleep very much. And then I just laugh. You can't take anything serious when you walk into those doors because otherwise the job would be no fun and I wouldn't be here after 11 years. I get to send them home to their parents. That's the best part. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Planning. Um, I can smell a lot of sound here today. So I just got back from Trinidad. I was at a class with uh, Downtown Colorado Inc. doing tax increment financing, trying to understand a lot of that for the URA. Um, so we're going to take some things there and try to see what we can accomplish, um, probably make some changes inside the URA as to what they've been doing um, and how they're kind of set up and maybe change their plan a little bit uh, based off some things that I learned. Um, so we'll be, we'll be chatting about that, especially um, you, Mr. Mayor, uh, as we look at how we want to structure some of those things, since most of them are your appointees. Um, so we'll be talking about that a little bit more. Grants, I submitted a grant this week for $315,000 for planning and a grant writing, um, which is all non-matching. That's for transportation. I'm working with a consultant on an EPA grant for Brownsfield Management, which will be submitted in October and November timeframe. Um, also non-matching, that's for City Hall, the theater, um, the Boys and Girls Club, two or three other properties throughout town um, to be assessed and then City Hall to be assessed and abated. Um, so just some work on that. Those are That's a non-matching grant as well. I'm working with a separate consultant on some infrastructure grant opportunities coming up. Um, that one's a kind of a cool one. Minimum ask is a million dollars, maximum ask is a hundred million dollars. Um, and so we're working on trying to see if we can get that one done. And there's no match on that one either. So just working on some grants. All the grants I'm working on right now are all non-matching. Uh, Rio Grande County's all hazard match, which we just discussed with Sky Fencing. I heard from Rio Grande County earlier this week that we should hear back from the federal side of uh, its approval within the next month. And then we can kind of start planning on the budgeting and moving forward with the Sky High Fencing project. Um, we're in the middle of the municipal code maintenance. Uh, we're working through the land use and water conservation sections of the code. And what we're focused on right now is making sure we're deconflicting chapter 12 with every other chapter um, because chapter 12 influences chapter five, which influences chapter four and chapter six is involved. So there's a lot of different things inside chapter 12 that reach out into the various other sections of code. So when we do the re rewrite of chapter 12, we wanna make sure that we're either matching what's in those other places or we do a separate ordinance that will make the changes that need to be changed inside those other chapters as we release it so we don't have confliction inside the code. Um, so that's a lot of, it's a lot of reading, a lot of work, and a lot of searching on the computer to figure out which words match which. Um, we'll be conducting public engagement 7 through 9 September throughout the city. Um, they will be at the Potato Festival. They will be at um, Homecoming game, which is the 22nd against Peyton. Um, so they're going to be at those different places. They're going to do some pop-up events. They're going to do some scheduled uh, conversations. The consultants will. Um, I'll get you guys a schedule as soon as I have it so that you guys can follow forward on that. Um, building maintenance is moving along as you guys see me drove up. Um, right now it's curing for a couple of days. Um, once uh, city manager gets back, we're going to do final color selections. They have a couple of samples of different tans and different colors to, to make sure that we choose the right one. It's one thing to look at a computer, it's another thing to look at a person. So we'll finish up those selections when she gets back next week. And then they will begin doing the color coding probably um, either late next week or the following week. It's really going to be dependent upon when they can get in some of the flashing and those kinds of things. Um, and instead of painting a lot of flashing, they're going to pull it and replace it with factory done coding so that that way it lasts longer. 
um, doesn't peel and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Working with uh, the city attorney, and I've asked them to pull all the deeds for city property. As we look at with parting with the ones off of Stalo and a couple other things that we're working on, I want to make sure that we don't run into any problems with deed restrictions, um, which was a possibility we ran into on one of them, has something on there. So we're going to see what they are, what, what's, what it maps as, and that way I'll put some notes inside our GIS that shows what restrictions are, and that way we don't run into that in the future if we move it, um, do any kind of sell. Um, so we're going to work on pulling all the deeds for all city property, which will allow us to not have any questions as we move down the road. If it's restricted, you know, we know not to even try to look at developments or selling it. Um, because some of them say, you can't build a building, you can make it a road, and that is all you can do. Um, so those are the things that we're going to look at and make sure we don't try to violate any of those in the future. Or if we do want to change it, uh, work through the city attorney and how to remediate those restrictions on the deeds. Um, and that pretty much sums up in a week. And I'm sure I'll be back here in two weeks to chat with you guys again for more stuff. So, questions? We've got a lot going on, Jay. Thank you for being on it. No worries. Most of it is all stuff that Rob loves. <laughs> City Attorney. Mayor, Council, good to see a full council again. I was wondering who the guy was with the goatee when I came in. <laughs> uh, so, um, first of all, uh, municipal court. Uh, we had 40 cases yesterday um, on the docket. Uh, Shoplifting, trespass, theft, harassment, traffic. Uh, it was a little challenging yesterday because uh, the judge was conducting this by Zoom and we had a lot of first appearances, meaning that I had to go out of here into the uh, other room uh, or in the courtroom, into the other room. And so it's, it's difficult to know what's going on uh, at the bench at that point and uh, to kind of pick that back up. So. Uh, Nita and I discussed that whole situation uh, when court was over, and uh, I think we came to a better solution of uh, really uh, having the judge uh, start court at 10 rather than at 9, and uh, me coming in probably at uh, 8.30 at the same time, and having all this time with the uh, individual defendants, because what you got to do when you have a lot of first appearances is sit down and um, go through the reports with the defendants, see how they're going to lead and explain to them what the offense reports say and so forth. Unfortunately, we've got pretty good offense reports that all the way through now, uh, but that's it's a time consuming thing. And sometimes you're in there with somebody for like a half an hour or so uh, going through a fairly complex set of circumstances. So uh, we're going to try that uh, from here on. And I think uh, we're going to try it for a while and see how that goes. And hopefully uh, we'll have um, the uh, in-person situation with the judge too in, uh, in the future. Um, <clears throat> so um, that was kind of how municipal court went. Uh, I sent you an opinion on uh, the uh, sale of the property and um, I think all of you got that probably on the computer. Well, I did pass that whole situation by uh, Cersei Council, I don't know, Sam White, and also by CMO Council, uh, Robert Sheasley, and they agreed with my opinion there. Uh, so I think we can uh, work from that to uh, consummate the uh, sale. Now, and I brought up to uh, DJ uh, the issue of having to go over the uh, titles uh, on the property because uh, I looked at some of those and uh, uh, we may need to take a second look at some of one or two of the deeds there and what they say. And I think that probably we might even want to go as far as having an O&E owner and commerce support uh, on that property before we get too close to the date on which we're going to contract because we need to iron out all those uh, issues uh, before we get into that particular stage. So. I'll be recommending probably that to Gigi in the next, uh, soon as she gets back, um, doing that. 
uh, so we know where we're going with that. Um, so, <clears throat> magnum opus, I guess you call it, of what I've been doing for the past uh, couple of weeks is the zoning code. I have uh, 151 pages of DJ's draft, and I have 199 pages of Neil Putnam's draft. And uh, so this is a very, very time intensive uh, thing to go through because I'm delivering uh, opinions about their questions. They've got some red linings in both of their drafts there that I'm having to address. Uh, and uh, sometimes just one or two pages take maybe an hour or two to, to really go through and put down. I've got uh, at this point 16 pages of um, opinion. Uh, and uh, response to legal questions about that. And I anticipate, and I'm at uh, page 65 right now, and I anticipate by the time we get through, it might be uh, like 20 or 30 pages. Uh, I can't tell at this point. I think it's going a little faster now uh, that we're getting through the, um, um, the, the first part was definitions and definitions are important to spend a lot of time on because that centralizes what you're really talking about when you talk about the zoning code. And uh, so that took a lot of time to do that. Um, the, you know, I, I was anticipating seeing a lot of changes in the uh, zoning districts, um, but uh, I haven't seen that in their, uh, their comments yet. Uh, mo mostly it's, uh, issues of, well, do we put this table, uh, our central zoning chart table, table three, I think it is, uh, do we put everything in there or do we structure this according to the districts and have everything combined that pertains to the district and uh, the, uh, the use table and the specification table in the same part. So that's, that's gonna be a determination that needs to be made. Um, so, um, that's what's going on with, uh, the analysis of the zoning code and I'm getting now, I've got to review the entire, um, statutory scheme of manufactured housing. I'm down to that point. So I'll be addressing that, uh, together with, uh, the supplementary provisions and so forth. Um, Hoping we can get to an end game on this within the next uh, couple of weeks or so. So, um, been a lot of a lot of time, as I say, on that. Um, the uh, Cog IGA, um, we have several components on that. Uh, there's the public notice; it's got to go out. Uh, I think it's not less than 30 days, and more than 60 days before a hearing on that newspaper publication. Um, the uh, designations of state interest, which we can go ahead and do. Um, the uh, ordinance of the resolution adopting the IGA. And uh, then they haven't yet supplied us with the rules and regulations. We've got a meeting that uh, is on September the 13th. And uh, I talked to Barbara, who is the attorney for COG, uh, talked to uh, David uh, uh, Baumgartner also, who is uh, uh, her colleague attorney. And uh, we're going to go through from about one to four o'clock, I think it is over there at the Alamosa, all the uh, rules and regulations. Uh, so we're getting there. I did check with Alamosa and uh, had Holly send me the IGA that was uh, supplied to them, and it is identical to the one that said one that's supplied to us. Uh, so uh, I think we're on the same page. They passed their first ordinance, I believe, on last Wednesday, she was telling me. So we're not the first ones to uh, to go on this whole thing. And uh, I think that's good. Let's see what how the municipalities are going to handle it. Uh, I think the county, she said, Barbara said today, the counties had all passed uh, the IGA themselves. Um, 
just a few dates in case you're interested in this. Uh, uh, Gigi wanted me to go to the chamber luncheon on the 22nd next Tuesday at Laura Wood. Um, CML meet on uh, September the 12th uh, at uh, the golf course. Um, uh, Alamo. Uh, four to seven. And uh, the uh, Sursa get together on September the 21st at uh, 1130 at Sky High. So those are some upcoming dates that you might have. And any of, any of you are interested in going to the CML, please let me know and I will register you. I have you marked on. For both of them? Yes. Okay. That's a, from what time to what time? Um, I will send you the link. Okay, that's what I've been doing. Uh, any questions on that? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to council, committee, city commission, and council reports. <clears throat> council Lock, we'll start with you. All right. Well, I, uh, I just want to give some kudos to several people in the city. As school started this week, this is the first time in a very long time that I've been involved with public school, other than I see it, I know that kids are going there, but you know. So being intimately involved, Kids Connection, I saw them walk it. I actually saw it and he go, dang, and she had all her little ducks and she was picking up more little ducks and she was carrying them around. Um, just a big shout out to the moms and dads that do those multiple school, multiple children, multiple, times every single morning and every single afternoon. It is doable, but it's not easy. And the teachers and the assistants, the crossing guards, the office staff, everybody out there in the mornings to receive the children and everybody out there in the afternoons to let them go out. They're, they're just, today I got to do all of it by myself. And the fact that I made it here tonight is a credit to all of them, because without their direction, I'd have just been lost. And I want to thank the police department because there's been a big police presence in the morning and in the afternoon for this when the schools are going in and coming out. And uh, I don't know if they're just trying to make a point of, hey, we're here. Schools back in, slow down a little bit, look around, or if there's actually something going on, I don't know, but I'm just glad that they're out there. And um, so, again, just to all the moms and dads and <coughs> grandmoms and aunts and uncles and people who are raising these children and the people who are helping take care of them and make sure they get in safe and get out safe, thank you so much. I just, that's all I've got. I just want to. I was amazed today. I I'm, I'm, don't know when to close. Because mm -hmm. there was so much. There was just, wow. There we go. That's a good stop point. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Howard? Uh, no. I'm glad you're back here. Very good. Also around. Uh, grain harvest is starting. Potato harvest will start soon. Be careful out on the roads. There's going to be a lot more truck traffic over the next month and a half. That's it. Your program? Just keep an eye out for your neighbors. <clears throat> keep an eye out for your own self. <laughs> You know, because sometimes you just don't pay attention to certain things. Um, kudos to the teachers, because they do deal with a lot. Every single year, I got letters from my kids' teachers saying this is my 11th year here and 15th year total dealing with kids. Like, you know, so it's... a uh, I've got four children of my own, so I know what it's like to deal with kids. And um, it's not always fun, but it is rewarding. 
when you when these kids are adults, they'll look back at you and you'll have so many connections with all these people. It'll be great. So so Marty Strong. Marty Strong. Um, Brad Lauren's back. And and Jason said, I job in traffic. And with that, Marty Strong, we will adjourn the meeting until September. September 7th. September 7th. 6 p.m. here. Same bat tonight. Introducing same bat tonight. Let me try and get that baby hit. I did not tonight. Introducing.